Modded Minecraft adds so many items that if we were to keep them all in chests, I have no doubt that by the end of the series, we would need over 1 million chests to store all of our items. So with that in mind, today's episode is going to be about how I'm going to stay organized using Applied Energistics 2. Basically turning all this mess of chests into something a lot more manageable. Without further ado, this episode is going to start with me explaining what I did all the way up to day 14, which was making some upgrades to the current setup and and organizing the base. I wanted to do this first because it really helps staying organized crafting everything needed for Applied Energistics 2, which we are now calling AE2 because, you know, it's a bit long to say Applied Energistics 2. So let me give you guys a quick rundown on how that organizing went. First, I made a Paxel which will function as our new axe, pickaxe, and shovel all in one tool. Then I tore down the house made a chisel, used the chisel to make fancy cobblestone, replaced my floor with the fancy cobblestone, fixed my auto furnace setup, now we have our input in the upper chest, the fuel goes in the middle chest, and the output is now placed in the bottom chest. Moved and upgraded the flux smashers and seeds, used colossal chest as new storage for the resources, then finally I expanded the platform so I can have a place to grow my trees. Now that I got those things out of the way, it is finally time to focus on getting started on Applied Energistics 2. One of the items we're going to need for AE2 are slime for the inscribers and nether quartz for various recipes. Thankfully, getting slimes and nether quartz are pretty straightforward. For those two items, I focus on witch water. The water can turn sand to soul sand, which we can then sieve for nether quartz and turn mushrooms into slime blocks. So to get to work on the witch water, I first set up a flux sieve for dirt, which gives us a chance for mycelium spores. Secondly, we are going to need barrels, so I crafted a bunch of them. Then, I made an area for the witch water. After, I used those spores on the dirt to create our first mycelium. All I had to do then was place the barrel right on top, then add water. In this case, I'm using the sink as an infinite water source. Then pipe the water out so it gets refilled automatically. Then I made a setup for automatic inputs and outputs for the witch water. Now all I have to do to get slime is right click on the witch water with a mushroom. And to get nether quartz, we place sand on the top chest. But to get a mushroom in the first place, we have to grind a few mushroom blocks for a chance of one mushroom. I do not know what the chances are, but it took me about 5 spores to get one. Wow. After I got the first one, I placed it on the mycelium block and twerk then collected. I did this for a little bit as I did not want to run out of mushrooms anytime soon. So with all that done, I went to go get some sand. Then I placed 3 stacks in the top chest and the rest in the furnaces as I will need glass in the near future. After sieving the soul sand, I was rewarded with 12 whole nether quartz which was good enough to keep going. So finally, after all that preparation, it is finally time to look into the AE2 quest line. It wanted me to get some surdus quartz and I did this by furnacing up some sky stone, smashing, then sieving the crushed sky stone. The next quest wanted me to make a charger and inscriber. I went ahead and made 5 whole inscribers as I intend to automate this tedious process. And to be able to use the inscribers in the first place, I needed to make these presses. And then with the presses, I will be able to make the printed circuits, which are essential to AE2. To make the four presses, I connected the inscribers to the generators, and then placed the required materials in the inscribers, and then finally getting those presses. And for you guys following along, it's always best to automate these inscribers, as they can only take one item at a time, which is inconvenient. So to automate this process, we are going to have to use the pipe spawn. First, I placed the advanced pipe upgrade to the extracting pipe as that will allow us to whitelist items. Then we craft a filter destination tool, then right click on the face of the block that you want it to insert into. Drag your tool to the slot, click, then submit. Then just rinse and repeat for the other three inscribers. Then BAM! We have automated four of the five inscribers gamers. All that's left to do is set an extract. Now for the fifth inscriber, I placed it like this with pipes all around. Then use the destination tool to shove printed silicons to the bottom, redstone in the middle, and the three different types of printed circuits on top. Now everything should work as soon as I connect power to it. Wow. Another thing that AE2 makes us do is charging our Cirrus Quartz. This is necessary to make Fluix Crystals and more Cirrus Quartz without sieving any more Sky Stone. The charger only accepts one item at a time, so it is quite necessary to automate this process. So, I lay down 3 chargers, set the pies to extract, then set pies to insert Cirrus Quartz from the top chest. Now if you place our Cirrus Quartz up here, it gets charged and sent down to this chest. This is also a good time to upgrade my generator setup because I have been running on quite the energy deficit for a while now. Spoiler warning gamers, I still am even after adding 22 more generators. I got it all hooked up. 
but this time I am adding a cold distributing chest right from the behind as I am not down to be putting coal manually in all of these generators. The next thing in the AE2 to do list is making fluix crystals. This part is easy. We just throw in our charged certus quartz crystals that we have been charging and the fluix dust into the water and then cash in the fluix crystals. The basic cabling quest was also quite easy. I just followed the recipes to make each cable and check the quest as complete. After those two quests, we get a little forward on channels. This is hard to explain at the moment, but it basically tells us we can't have more than 8 devices in one channel out of the ME controller. And speaking of the ME controller, that is what we're going to be crafting after the terminal quest. Finishing this quest was also quite easy because we have set up all the automation before we got here. All we have to do is craft it, one item at a time. This ME crafting terminal is the best part about AE2 gamers. It's going to allow us to conveniently craft much easier because we will have access to all of our items at once while crafting. And that is quest complete. Now it is time for the controller, basically the brains of the AE2 network. At this point, I was overjoyed at how close I am to this OP inventory system. As we are getting really close gamers, I can't stop thinking about the day we don't have to live like peasants anymore. All I had to do now was pick up this high stone block from the furnace then craft it. After brainstorming really hard, I have decided to place down the controller. Now there's just a few more items to craft to complete our AE2 journey. I crafted myself a ME smart cable, as those are my preferred cables as they count channel. Remember, we can't exceed 8 or else bad things happen. And then I crafted myself an ME drive to store all of our cells. Just to clarify gamers, the cells are the ones that will be holding all of our items. The ME drive is just where the cells will be stored. For the setup, I just popped the drive down next to the controller smart cable right on top then the crafting terminal on the cable now all it needs is some power the last thing we need now are cells first tier is going to let us store 1024 items up to 63 different types i crafted myself some 1k storage components and one storage cell housing to get ourselves our first storage cell i immediately popped it down in the drive then unloaded all of our items in the terminal gamers that felt like a huge weight just lifted on me now using our brand new crafting terminal we finished crafting the rest of the cells to fill the drive and now we can store all of our items in there without an issue now all that's left for me to do is to destroy all the chests on the island and stick it in the system any crafting we need is now done through the terminal which is connected to a huge and inventory and that's going to conclude our tier 1 setup for AE2 gamers. If you guys would like to see how I take this up to the next level by adding auto crafting you should totally check out the next episode.